can do is just tell the truth and trust in the American people that over time uh, they're going to uh, know what the truth is. Yes, it is time for the truth right here, right now. This is the conservative syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives with your host, John Matthews. It's a latter day prophet. Vaying against the hypocrisies of our time. And Joe Hakos. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. The conservative syndicate is comprised of some of the most informed pundits and activists available today. Together, we seek to tear down the imaginary wall, a separation between church and state through education, information, and engagement on the religion of politics and the politics of religion. And now, your host on the globally syndicated conservative syndicate, John Matthews and Joe Hakos. And how are we doing this great afternoon all across this great land of ours and around the world? It is that time. It's time for the conservative syndicate coming to you live right now, coast to coast and around the world. Globally syndicated, nationally acclaimed. We're glad to have you with us tonight. A lot of stuff going on out there today in New Hampshire. And uh, we're going to be talking about that during the course of the day today, along with uh, some other stuff. It's going to be kind of a, I think, maybe a light broadcast in terms of uh, subject matter. We're going to have try to have some fun with this. I mean, this, if nothing else, about this particular election cycle, it's got a, a whole lot of comic relief to it. And uh, we're going to just, I know, we're just going to have fun with it today because, just like everything else, I, I'm not real sure how this is all going to pan out. You know, the polls out in New Hampshire are going to be closing here in about an hour. And uh, so it will take us into the second hour of our show. And we'll probably start seeing or hearing some uh, some solid uh, numbers in terms of returns and everything else. So, um, you know, just stick, stick with us during the course of the day and uh, we'll have some fun with it. Without having said that, let me bring on my co-host and... Uh, Partner in Crime, Joe Hakos from Dry Report. How are you doing tonight, Joe? Hey, John. Uh, serious stuff, serious, serious stuff. I'm glad that the, we're here tonight. I'm glad our listeners, and if you're listening and somehow you're listening on like maybe the TuneIn app and you're they're waiting in line in New Hampshire to go cast the ballot, and you, uh, don't worry about the scary uh, old Marco bot that might be out there going, ooh, ooh. What you really do re- need to remember is if Marco Rubio had his way, that Tea Party conservative that he is, if he would have had his way, we wouldn't even be worried about immigration because we'd all be done for anyway because of the Gang of Eight Builder. He was so happy to uh, author and, and support and run up against and go, we need this, America. Just keep that in mind when you're, yeah, the, when you're uh, out there and go for that Tea Party conservative, Marco Rubio. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Marco. I, I, you know, I, I, and the reason why someone. I can say all this, John, is because well, he's from Florida, and so he's my senator. And if I had anything I could do, if we didn't have the 17th Amendment, I would have been right in my legislature going, haul his butt back to Tallahassee, and it's time to either have him pull it or then we get rid of him. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, – you. at least you have the luxury of having somebody from Florida running <laughs> out here. Well, I don't know, out here, you know, we're, we're kind of hoping that uh, – more and more people don't run. I mean, I don't know what's going on out here in California. It's been going on for a while. But uh, um, it, it, it's interesting to note that uh, the numbers, you know, it, it's one of the things I find fascinating about this particular cycle that I, I guess maybe I've paid more attention to it than others in the past is how the, the polls try to paint one type of picture. They try to give you uh, something out there that, you know, I, I, and I think and to a great degree, it's so that the people conducting the polls and therefore the people reporting them sound a lot more intelligent than they really are. And, uh, but then when the numbers roll in, everybody looks like a blithering idiot. And, and, and that's, that's the comedy, the comic relief in this. Um, I'm hearing, um, you know, at the beginning, it was like uh, the poll numbers were supposed to be just take Sanders and Clinton, the easiest to uh, to use here. And um, I think they had it like Sanders was supposed to beat Hillary or was polling like two points higher than Hillary, 42 to 40 or 43 to 41, something like that. And lo and behold, the first the first returns that came in from New Hampshire this morning, of course, it's one of the smallest 
precincts out there. But one of the first results comes in, he beats her like 60 to 30 or something like that. You know, um, Donald Trump was supposed to just rock everybody's world. And the first poll results come in this morning. The first precincts come in this morning. And it's a three-way tie for first place between Trump, Cruz, and, and Rubio. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these things. And I, I, I guess I didn't pick it up quite as much in the 2000. 12 general election when we had all the you know the big talking heads out there the dick morrises and the carl roves and all these people yeah uh, they were brilliant yeah telling us how uh, marco or uh, how uh, romney was going to walk away with this thing you know and he ends up getting schlonged <laughs> uh it, it's just um it's a testament to that today's political doesn't seem like too many people have actually caught on to the political environment or the atmosphere that's out there now and I, I think, if anything, what we should be saying or recognizing is that apparently people are no longer driven by ideology uh, when, they, when it comes to the polls. You know, how, how do you support a Donald Trump, a man with virtually no ideology other than Donald Trump? You know, yeah. <laughs> me, 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 yeah, me, me, yeah, me, me. You know, so it, that, that's, it, it, that awesome. kind of stuff is like. And, you know, I, I've got some comments I'm going to make during the course of the day, some things I was looking at during the course of the day in terms of what makes up the Trump voter. And, uh, and because one of the things they're talking about is another record turnout for a, uh, for a caucus. And if that's the case or primary, in this, one, in this case, it's not a caucus in terms of delegates. I think people actually go and vote here. No, this is this is a different this is a different animal than a caucus. This is an actual primary, John. Right, this right. Is a they actually primary. go out and vote, right? Yeah, and uh, this so is where everybody gets together and talks about it, and then all right, here's my guy. It's something that you would probably see at a local union meeting, probably when you're electing your shop steward or something. But right now, with three of the 300 precincts in, it's a three-way tie with Cruz, Kasich, and Trump, all receiving nine votes. Nine votes total, people. Yeah, and uh, uh, Sanders has, has just done a number on Hillary Clinton. Of course, I think everybody knew Sanders was going to win, is going to win New Hampshire, but I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be very telling. I I wonder what's going to happen if he does. He ends up winning like this margin, sixty to thirty. I mean, that's astronomical. Oh yeah, yeah. And, 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 and uh, now, what's the, the Democrat form. Party going to do? You're hey, going to you're going to have form. to embrace Lins the burn, man. You just what are you going to do? You know. Hey, true to form, Lindsey Graham has zero votes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's funny. One of the things I did, I collected some tweets during the course of the day here that we're going to have some fun with. One came from John McCain, who made mention of the fact he hasn't endorsed anybody. Uh, his guy, he, the guy he endorsed, Lindsey Graham, dropped out of the race. And uh, he hasn't endorsed anybody since then. But he put out a tweet out there today uh, saying something along the lines of, Lindsey Graham has campaigned harder for Jeb Bush than he did for himself. So it's like, yeah, well, <laughs> what can you say? You know, what can you say? So uh, well, we're going to have some fun with it. Well, Ron you know, Edwards Jeb was buying, be, so it's okay. <laughs> What's that? Jeb was buying, so, it's, you know, that's why Lindsey was oh, working. Oh, yeah, well. yeah. I'm still, I'm still chuckling that the guys that stood up at his town hall the other day and said, hey, we haven't been paid for our time. <laughs> yeah, wait for that check. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're going to have some fun. Ron Edwards from the Edwards Notebook will be with us in the second hour. Yay! Yeah, he's coming back. He's uh, after uh, an extended absence, and uh, we're going to have him back on today and see, see what he's uh, feeling out there, see if he's feeling the burn. And, uh, he's feeling along with, the burn. <laughs> along with some other stuff going on here. So uh, let us get our first commercial break out of the way here, and we'll come back and we'll get into uh, the day's festivities. So stay with us right here. At the Conservative Syndicate, don't go away. You can catch all our archives at the Conservative Syndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. 
But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on washing and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-790-5960. That's 1-800-790-5960. Again, 1-800-790-5960. Call now. Prices are for base buildings only. May not be available in some areas. Attention business owners, do you want a stimulus package that really works? Before you spend thousands of dollars more than you should on your next building project, listen to this. General Steel has a stimulus package designed to help you save as much as half the cost of conventional construction on your next building. As much as half. That's right. General Steel can save you thousands of dollars with a pre-engineered steel building designed for your business or church. How about a 50 by 100 foot building for under $30,000? So don't pay thousands more than you should without calling General Steel first and save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. With the projected demand for steel in Japan and China, prices may be skyrocketing. 877-927-3360 Limited time offer 24 month commitment and credit qualification require cancellation fee, auto pay and paperless billing and other restrictions apply. If you can't See the difference? Why pay the difference? Switch to Dish for the best deal in entertainment. Only Dish brings you the best in entertainment for less than $20 a month. Cut the cable and don't get directed. Switch to Dish because at just $19.99, Dish saves you every time you turn on the TV. It's so simple. The same channels cost less with Dish. So since you can't see the difference, don't pay the difference. Switch to Dish for the best deal in entertainment. Get premium movie channels free for three months starting at just $19.99. Dish saves you every time you turn on the TV. Call now to save with Dish. Dial 1-800-600-1645. That's 1-800-600-1645. The same channels for less than 20 bucks a month. Dish. Call 1-800-600-1645 for details. Folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a PhD in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag, who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. Conservatives, and uh, I want to uh, just just before we really kick into high gear here, uh, those of you listening to us right now on High Plains uh, Radio and SHR Media, uh, I want to give you a rundown of what's going on here. We're covering uh, we're going to be covering the New Hampshire primary results uh, once the polls close. They uh, they close here in about forty five minutes, and we'll be I, I think by then. 
there'll be some preliminary numbers popping out there uh, that we can pick up and relay to you. But I want to let you know then that Dan Butcher, uh, who follows us on High Plains and SHR Media, will be uh, doing the bulk of the work tonight on the New Hampshire primary. Then after him, at 10 o'clock Eastern time, behind enemy line, uh, behind enemy lines, I'm sorry, the guys there over at behind enemy lines, they'll be picking up the coverage also. So you'll have full coverage here at uh, SHR Media and High Plains Radio. So uh, you want to you know, pick it up, but you want to just be able to make a night of it. Better than listening to Kelly, uh, Megan Kelly, and the rest of that crew. I, I, you know, I caught some Bill O'Reilly last night. Something's happened to this guy. He's brain damaged. No, uh, no, no. I, <laughs> it's been quite a while, John. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't watched him in quite a while, and I just happened to be channel surfing. There wasn't anything really on. I was waiting for another program to come on. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, there was a documentary coming on last night. I watched part of it. I'm going to have to pick it up on the uh, on-demand segment. It was called Homegrown. And it was a documentary on homegrown terrorists. Uh, very interesting. So I was waiting for that to come on. And uh, I, I just kicked over to uh, Fox News just to see what, you know, what they were talking about. And O'Reilly was there. And I'm like, what happened to this guy? It's like, he, he doesn't sound like anything like the Bill O'Reilly. I think the last time I watched him was probably over a year ago. You know? uh, what, what, what happened to this guy, Joe? He's a putz. <laughs> he's a putz. He's a he's a he's one of them people, John. That back in the Revolutionary War would have been for the British when the British won a battle, and would have been with the Patriots when the Patriots won a battle. He's trying to pick the win inside. He won't pick a side because he says it himself. He's an independent, and he he knows so much and so so much about everything. He's such a smart guy. He knows everything. And he just goes and he uses that show as a glorified platform to hawk his stuff. I don't give a crap what money's going to whoever. Who gives a crap, Bill? You're not looking out for anybody but your damn ratings, Bill. Yeah. Well, it oh, seems sorry. like... Did I, did I hold back? I could give you some more. Oh, no, no. I, 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 I'm I, just... I was astounded. I'm like, I remember when hey, this guy hey, used you to know actually... What? You know what? John, I think it was a couple years ago, he sat with Obama at halftime on a Super Bowl and sat there, didn't ask him any, I think it was during the election season, if I remember right, didn't ask him any tough questions. Then he says, Obama's a good and decent man. Wow. Blah, blah. I threw up all over my carpet. Well, if I wanted, if I wanted opinions like that, I'd just listen to Joel Osteen for crying out loud. Obama's Thank just you. such a swell guy. You know, <laughs> yeah, and that, okay. And that's when I knew Bill O'Reilly was full of freaking crap. Yeah, well, you know, there's a special place in hell for people that support Barack Obama. <laughs> yes, there is. And I hope Bill O'Reilly can watch his. He's he's so happy about his poll numbers, about his ratings. Oh, how they're, how they're, they're the highest. He's the highest rated cable talk, whatever fest in yeah, history. Well, what, blah, what's, blah, blah, what's the deal Ten there? years running. Who gives a crap, Bill? Yeah, he's run he's writing all these books, killing Reagan, killing Jesus, killing Lincoln. What what is he like trying to take over Harry Potter's place or what? Yeah, you know, killing Kermit the Frog. Uh, <laughs> killing uh what was that guy? Waldorf and the other guy that's up in the up in the thing for the Muffets. I, I think was, he I killed I think astound- he killed yeah. the cool I was sax just astounded. Player. I was astounded that he would and I was like, This doesn't sound like a guy I remember listening to. He used to actually take people to task, you know? He, no. would, he would confront people. It's like this was just one massive brown nosing session. Yeah, if you're I, a liberal, a, uh, yeah, you, get I, under, I, I, you don't have to really worry away. about Bill O'Reilly taking you to task or anything. You know, you have to worry about taking uh, taking a task. And actually, no kidding, conservative has to watch out for a yeah, while. Yeah, I, I he'll, guess so. He'll go yeah. after him. He'll go after him with both of his evil fangs. Yeah, well, it was and just like, it was, whatever, it, Bill. It was noteworthy for me. I just like, wow, this is not what I expected. But uh, what was on, John? Because I certainly didn't watch. Because I've I've been pretty much done with Fox for quite a while, actually. Yeah. Well, I, I like I said, I I just happen to be surfing the channels. I don't I don't spend a whole lot of time um, at places like Fox News. I have I'll usually watch them during you know things like this, election results and stuff like that. But I don't watch them on a regular basis because. It's too much. Uh, it, it's too much non-news. It, it, it's just like 
you know, I don't care what John McCain thinks about anything. I don't care what Karl Rove's latest uh, gambit is. I don't, I don't care what Lindsey Graham has to say about anything. And that, those seem to be the staples at Fox News these days. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't listen to them that much. And, yeah, uh, I want anything about politics. We're going to go get Karl Rove, the guy that almost lost it for Bush, did, did not call it very well. I, I mean, uh, he's a loser, let's face it. He's got a whiteboard. Oh, hey, that's pretty awesome. You know, I could go to, I could go to Staples and get me a little whiteboard and a couple of markers and spend uh, fifteen bucks and, you know, well, I, I, I'm 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 yeah, of the put, opinion. Put my butt on TV. I'll draw little smiley faces and whatever, and give you give you whatever, and it'll be just as good as Rove is giving you. I'm just of the opinion. Somebody who has told me that he has no intention of putting any money into the presidential campaign at all. And he's going to what then why are you talking to him about the presidential campaign? I mean, if this guy has no interest in who wins, why are you asking him to give you an analysis of who's going to win? And we all know you, you, you know, you want the Bushes anyways. So yeah, let's just <laughs> let's that's, cut the crap. You know, that's the other reason you quit having to watch is because it's nothing but cheerleading. Uh, yeah. They want to they want to they want to absolutely pick who's the candidate because you can tell by the amount of airtime they give them. Yeah. Every night it's a Trump. Yeah. Every night it's a Rubio. Well, you know what? I, Not I, even let, a little let, bit. It's every night. Let me bring this up here uh, in line with what we're talking about right now. So, um, so you, when you go through the channels and you see them on here, you just keep on going by. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, it just happened. If if I had, if I had just turned the TV on just a little bit later, I probably wouldn't even looked, you know, because I would have just gone straight to the to the documentary I was looking for. But it was some dead time. I was like five ten minute dead time so uh, well then, let me see what's going on here let's see what's all over on fox news are they are they talking to anybody about the campaign that's what i w- was looking for you know is there anything going on in new hampshire that that i haven't heard yet that kind of stuff so um but it wasn't it was just blah, mundane same old bill riley hey i'm you know i'm i'm just i love everybody i'm like jesus christ what the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking out for you with his little pen and whatever. All yeah. right. Anyway, I, I, in line with what's going on right now, where we're at today, I thought this was interesting. Like I said, I'm just going to be pulling random stuff that I've been collecting during the day and uh, uh, just sharing it with you. Just to, Let's just kind of, for purpose of perspective, just trying to keep some stuff in perspective here and, uh, just, and having some fun with this whole thing. Now, um, a little piece here. I, I'm looking at a Yahoo blog here. This, these guys are supposed to be the people that are kind of going to be following uh, the results as they come in kind of thing. And they've done a pretty good job with uh, stuff in the past. So I thought, okay, we'll give them another shot and see if we can use them as an information source here. But anyway, um, there's a little blurb here that they put out here. And I want to read this to you just to kind of put some things in perspective for people uh, that we've been since a year, just from a year ago. Okay, the, this is an article about where everything was at a year ago. Uh, it says it's interesting to look back at where these races stood back in February 2015. An NBC News Marist poll of 1,013 New Hampshire voters, this is last year, resulted in some numbers that did not quite hold up to the scrutiny of 12 months of campaigning. On the Republican side, one year ago, February 2015, Florida Governor Jeb Bush led everybody with 18%. His two closest competitors, Governor Scott Walker at 15% and Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul, had 14%, are now out of the race. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie was at 13%. Former Arkansas government Governor Mike Huckabee was at 7%. Ben Carson was at 7%. Texas Senator Ted Cruz was at 6% tied with Florida Senator Marco Rubio at 6%. And all the other candidates uh, were just above 1%, with 13% undecided, okay? um, And Trump wasn't even in in this. Trump wasn't even in the ratings at all, okay? Now... He didn't announce then. He didn't announce until, like, June. Yeah, so now where we are at now, the, the polls now show Donald Trump leading with 30%. Followed by Rubio with 17, Cruz with 15, John Kasich with 10, and Bush with 9. Now, these are polls. These are not results. This is what they say the polls are saying, okay? Um, now, 
among the Democrats. Hillary Clinton led with 69 percent, yeah. <laughs> 56 points ahead of Bernie Sanders. Vice President Joe Biden was at 8 percent. Jim Webb was at 2 percent. And Martin O'Malley was less than 1%. Well, he never changed. He's the only guy in the campaign that never changed. <laughs> he's, the, there's, he's the only guy that he got consistently right was Martin yeah. O'Malley's numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now where we're at, today I'm reading numbers that says Bernie Sanders is at about 60% and Hillary Clinton's at 30%. So the numbers have been completely reversed. And the same thing on the Republican side. And I remember we were talking at that time. Everybody, you know, people were telling me, oh, you're supporting Ted Cruz. Look at the polls. He's going nowhere. I said, no, Cruz is a marathon runner. He's going to build this thing up slow and steady. And by the time we get to the caucuses and the primaries, he's going to be in the running. And we, we, we talked about it, and we've talked about it all along the line here. But it's interesting that now we got the people that just a year ago were sitting at the top. Jeb Bush is down in the bottom dweller section. And even when the number's coming in right now, they don't expect him to finish any higher than 5 or 6%. So he's down where Marco Rubio was a year ago. And Marco Rubio, according to polls, again, we're just talking polls or, you know, favorability polls, uh, Rubio should come in in the top three here along with Ted Cruz if it keeps going the way it's going. And so that, that's an interesting twist. And like I said a year ago, Trump wasn't even in the picture. And look where we're at now. So it's, it's amazing, you know, that, that uh, in politics, what, 48 hours is an eternity. Things happen and change so quick on a dime just because of something that is tweeted or something that is insinuated or whatever. But Yeah, I, you know, insinuated like Marco Rubio is a robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... Um, I saw they, uh, they showed, I saw some pictures of the, these guys that are out there, I guess, dressed like robots or something. And, yes, they, um, yes. Appa- yeah. Apparently, um, a couple of them have been kind of, a, what's the word, accosted, you know, roughed up a little bit. I don't know. One of them was kind of evil looking, so yeah. they, had, they had to rough them up. Well, you know, the other thing is, 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 is there's some other aspects of this. Um, the Bernie brothers, have you heard about them? These are the guys that apparently there's a small group of, of um, you know, really pro-activist kind of guys. Uh-huh. And they're Bernie Sanders supporters. Ah, so are they okay. like blue and now, or something? Yeah, what their claim is, what the media is telling us, is that these guys have basically stolen the Internet for Bernie Sanders. These are the guys that are out there doing all the hardcore uh, damage to the Hillary Clinton campaign. Ooh, uh, you remember I heard something like that about the... The Paul bots, remember? Yeah, yeah, remember that? Yeah, the trolls? Well, here's something. I just want to share this before we go to the break here. Now, this is is funny. Uh, This uh, this is coming from um, Alyssa Berzenak, I guess, who's one of the uh, people out there blogging right now on the the primary. And she says that what what these guys have done is they've taken control of, of, of the social media sites like Reddit and 4chan and, and some of these other sites that are out there. And she says, um, they, the thing is that these, gen, these boys, they're boys, they're men, young men, um, are pretty much anarchists. So you kind of wonder, I'm kind of wondering if they're part of an animus or something like that. They're very anti-establishment, and they're all white and they're all male. And uh, now I would think in normal terms, isn't that how the left describes us right-wing extremists? White, uh, you know, we're anti-establishment, white, and, uh, you know, clinging to our guns and our religion? So is it, could it be possible that uh, anarchy uh, transcends ideology? Well, of course it would, because it's anarchy. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's what that's about. But I thought that was interesting. This is an interesting thing that people are talking about out there, is that how the Bernie brothers are out there taking advantage of social media, which I know firsthand, that's how Bernie Sanders has been running his campaign. He must have picked something up out of the Obama playbook. Social well, and, media and, and, is, he, and he followed the young social media crowd. He followed the... the yeah, social Ron media Paul, is astronomically oh effective if you can get it done right and, and get it pointed in the right direction. 
So um, I guess that's why the college crowds are out there so much supporting Bernie Sanders, which, by the way, I want to make a comment when we come back here about that. Um, Gloria Steinem, I guess, made some comment about um, all the Bernie Sanders girls, the women that follow Bernie Sanders, and she's being raked over the coals for, believe it or not, being sexist. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Bernie's a a feminist. The, you know the that, leader right? of the feminist movement is being accused of being sexist. Imagine uh, that. <laughs> yeah, well, Bernie's being sexist. I mean, you really, he's running against Hillary. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we got to go to a break. When we come back, we'll uh, continue discussing here or having fun with that's what i mean that's the, the phrase of the day we're going to have fun with all this stay with us right here at conservative syndicate we'll be right back you can catch all our archives at the conservative syndicate.net the conservative syndicate real conservative talk from real conservatives Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification require cancellation fee, auto pay, and paperless billing, and other restrictions apply. If you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? Switch to DISH for the best deal in entertainment. Only DISH brings you the best in entertainment for less than $20 a month. Cut the cable and don't get directed. Switch to DISH because at just nineteen ninety nine, DISH saves you every time you turn on the TV. It's so simple. The same channels cost less with DISH. So since you can't see the difference, difference don't pay the difference switch to dish for the best deal in entertainment get premium movie channels free for three months starting at just 1999 dish saves you every time you turn on the tv call now to save with dish dial 1-800-600-1645 that's 1-800-600-1645 the same channels for less than 20 bucks a month dish call 1-800-600-1645 for details Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 866-761-0959. one 866 When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately. Call this special tax hotline today for free info at 1-866-761-0959. That's 1-866-761-0959. 1-866-761-0959. Term Life Insurance. It can be a powerful way to protect your assets and your family. You work hard to earn and save your money to build a nest egg for the future. Don't let it get wiped out because you didn't plan ahead. Take the time now and make a small investment in a half million dollars or more in quality term life insurance. Call the Term Lifeline and let us shop the best companies to give you the lowest rates. We specialize in policies of a half million dollars and above. Ask about some of our 10 and 20 year fixed rate plans with guaranteed rates. Call the Term Life line right now for your free insurance quote. 800 870 3609. 800 870 3609. You owe it to yourself to protect your family and your assets. Make term life insurance part of that plan. Call the term life line right now. 800 870 3609. 800 870 3609. Hey, folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a Ph.D. in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. Read something recently worth thinking about. 
It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag, who defends the protesters' right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. From Real Conservatives, I'm your host, John Matthews, along with my co-host, Joe Hakos, and uh, we're just having some fun, just having some fun here uh, with a lot of the stuff that's going on in the primary today uh, out there in New Hampshire, and just pretty much aclo- across the political spectrum altogether. So I um, hope you enjoy what we have for you today, and uh, as we're going along here, I'm going to do my best here to try to figure out why my, my mic volumes are not where they're supposed to be on my side here, but uh, it's just the nature of the beast sometimes. But anyway, getting on, going on or along here as we're, as we're coming down the trail here, um, apparently the big debate or the big duel right now this morning, early this morning, was a, uh, the rivalry between John Kasich and Chris Christie as to who is the t- king of the town halls. That, that they're out there in Tweetland battling over who, who went to the most town halls during the course of the New Hampshire primary. And um, I guess that means something. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> I don't know, but I saw a headline where a 600-pound pig showed up at one of the polls. What's that? A 600-pound pig showed up at one of the polls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody, Ooh. Ooh, yeah that's they, exciting. Yeah, there's something happening out there. Got on, got on the loose or something like that. I, I don't know if that was. Never mind. I'm not going there. That would be just. That would just be bad of me. That'd be a tasteless joke. And and I, and apparently nobody mistook her for Hillary Clinton either. No, I was going another direction, John. <laughs> About a state that's next to Pennsylvania and New York and Delaware. Well, maybe somebody should have grabbed the pig and check it for lipstick. Check it for lip. Maybe Sarah Palin sent it, it down Penguin, here. Penguin, I forgot about that. But she's just a hockey mommy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just, uh, it just uh, anyway, uh, Meredith Shiner, who is one of the uh, conservative pundits, actually, over at the Washington Post, uh, I thought she was most, uh, had the most appropriate response. Like I said, I just pulled stuff off of Twitter today. The just stuff that just struck my fancy, just made me chuckle or laugh. And she says, good luck to either Christie or Kasich in trying to prove they've won the town hall contest. <laughs> even, though, even though king of town halls is not an official elected position. So, <laughs> yeah, good luck to you, uh, uh, Chris and uh, John Kasich out there, because it's about the only thing you've got to look forward to. Uh, in terms of this, in fact, one of the things I was I caught an interview last night, um, very short interview. Like I said, I, I did, I've been doing channel surfing a lot the last couple of weeks uh, when shows that I normally watch on breaks and stuff. I, I go, I just go out and I check. Uh, like I like uh, one uh, one America News. You know, they're very very. Uh, it's a biased website. It's certainly conservative, but when it comes to reporting the news, they just report the news. They don't do. Um, commentary. They have their commentators, but they don't do commentary while they're reporting the news, and that's why I like it. Um, and then I'll, I'll jump over to Fox News sometime, every once in a great while. I'll even go to MSNBC or CNN, just if it's something that I would just want to see, oh, what kind of comic relief are we going to get from this? Um, I'll, I'll go over and check them. And, and I caught a, uh, a short interview with Chris Christie, uh, was talking with Megyn Kelly, and she was saying, uh, she was asking him about the poll numbers in New Hampshire. You know, it shows you at like 5 or 6%. And he's, he's just like, well, you know, you got to know our internal polling tells us that you, everybody's going to be really surprised uh, at, at, at where we place in this race. We're going to do a lot better than a lot of people think we, we're going to do. And uh, lo and behold, I woke up this morning and they're saying, yeah, we expect Christy to come in at 6 or 7%. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you jump from 4 to 5% to 6 to 7%. So 
Yeah, that's a great, uh, I guess that's a great increase for somebody like uh, Chris Christie. But, um, and, oh, I know, here's something I want to share with you guys. Um, in, in line with Chris Christie, and I, I, I can relate to this. Actually, I can relate to this. And it was uh, a post that was put out there by uh, one of my Facebook friends, Jonathan Dunn. And he says, I wake up this morning and I want to channel my inner Madeleine Albright and endorse a candidate for 2016. I absolutely despise fat people who won't vote for Chris Christie. It's just wrong, immoral, and stupid. We need someone who will represent us. It's time to admit there is a war on fat people going on. Look at how us fat people are spoken about in the White House. Look at how Michelle Obama talks about us and wants to take away our gorgeous, our, our gorgeous foods in schools and replace it with a salad. Since the Oscars were recently about discrimination based on race, I would ask you to think about how many fat people were nominated. I grew up watching the likes of John Candy, but who do we have today? Lastly, it's time to admit something about politics in America. Your country has never been the same since William Taft. I think the problem is clear. There are too far too many skinny people running America. <laughs> I like that. I relate to that, uh, being one of those people that uh, could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris Christie in a donut eating contest with a, a, and probably walk away the winner. So I just I threw that out there for a little bit of comic relief. I hope you got a kick out of it. I did. I, know, I guess my sense of humor sometimes um, is a little bit warped, but you know that's what makes me who I am. Um, what, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, I, I kind of go with Jonathan there, you know, hey, Chris is in there to be our comic relief. And if he doesn't, and, and if you don't, if, if he doesn't like you, look, don't get stuck on a bridge. You never get off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, you know, Joe, let me ask you, have you, have you picked up on any of the, the, the comic stuff? I mean, there's a lot of comedy in this, you know, it, it, it's like. I guess a lot of it's just because there's so many people that really think they know what's going on, and it's obvious to me that nobody really has any idea what's happening here and how it's going to end up. Well, thankfully, uh, they've got some decent weather. They had a little bit of snow yesterday, and so it wasn't so bad today. You know, it's typical winter weather, so it wasn't like a blizzard and people were dying to get to these poles and stuff because that would just be, for these guys, that would be just really get over Okay, get over it because I can understand getting there, but wow. So uh, the, the funniest thing, really, the funniest thing I saw was uh, uh, the 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 cruise guy, uh, campaign guy, uh, uh, going after the, <laughs> the guy in the robot costume. <laughs> it's like out there in front of the polling place. It's like, really, dude? That's just like, I had to do it, man. He was vicious. This guy, I had to take him. Uh, he was roboting everywhere. <laughs> it's just like, you got to be, dude, really? And so some of these people were just, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. The, the pig's showing up. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, but, you know, uh, the other thing I find pretty funny is uh, you had a town, uh, you know, New Hampshire is uh, known for the, the, the town, uh, these towns that at, at midnight start to vote. You had like nine people show up to vote. <laughs> you know, it's like, all righty, well, you know, yeah, hey, well, you okay. Know, the key to getting people to show up at midnight is showing Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's how you get people to show up in midnight. See me, Seymour. <laughs> See me. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's how you do that. So um, I don't know what they're doing. It's a, It was called traditional. It's a traditional midnight vote. You know, some place had midnight services for church. Well, I don't know. It's is that answer. why it ended up with a three way tie? <laughs> yes, a three way tie with 24. Hold on, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I said 24 percent each. Nine votes each <laughs> for Cruz, Kasich, oh. and the Trumpster. Yeah, who's still and, out and there that going? Was who's news. Still out there going? Hey, I, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't want a single payer system for health care, but we just can't let people die out in the street. Right. Right. Well, here it is. I, I just looking at a graphic right here. The poll that you're talking about, or the uh, Dixville, Dixville Notch, the very first one, and uh, Hart's location and Millsfield. Okay, so Dixfield Notch and Millsfield, the two, the two that opened up at midnight last night. A total, total number of votes cast between them, 37 votes. <laughs> 
Cruz got 24 percent. Kasich got 24. Kasich got 24 percent and Trump got 24 percent. Yep. OK, so I guess the question then would be because that only totals up to 27. What about the other 10? I no, guess that no, must have been, is that the coin toss, uh, the to- coin toss uh, crowd or what? I don't know. Were we talking Democrat or this Republican? No, this Republican it was primary. Democrat. They said no, it's the Democrat total- broke. The Democrat broke 60, 30 percentage wise, just like the polls. Oh, I guess the, the other votes would have gone to the, uh, some of the other candidates. Let's put it that way. Okay, so 27 of the 37 casts split three ways between Cruz, Kasich, and Trump with, I guess, the balance going to somebody else or some other combination out there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's funny, though. That's funny. Um, All right. Now, let's see here. What else I got here? Uh, Oh, here's one. This is funny. This is a tweet from Kathleen uh, uh, Rowan. I guess she's one of the bloggers out there. She spoke to a voter who came to vote for Trump until he got to the polls and found out he's a registered Democrat. <laughs> As I said before, <laughs> who are Donald Trump's supporters? Yeah, I told this, you before, a lot of disaffected Democrats who wish they had the Democratic Party of 20 years ago. Right. Well, said here's, before. here's the kicker. He ended up voting for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I can't have Donald, I'm going to go with Bernie. <laughs> if I can't have Trump, I want Bernie. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's, oh, just, that's, that's just awesome, dude. <laughs> I can't have that Donald, so I'm going to go with the next best thing I can vote for, which is Bernie. <laughs> I want total anarchy, either total so, anarchy or total totalitarianism. <laughs> and you know what that is? That's just irresponsibility because – I'm sure there was a time he could have went up to probably like here it's 30 days prior, which would be, oh, let's see, that is that is next Tuesday, I think, before the primary. So you have to have your registration completed and in, in place before that time. After that time, you can no longer register to vote in a particular. You can be registered, but if you wanted to change it or anything like that individual wanted to, that's just irresponsibility, which yeah. is the microcosm of what's wrong with our voters today. Yeah, Half the, the people out there aren't responsible enough to vote. That's the John Gruber theorem in action right there. Absolutely. The, the stupidity of the American voter. I'll leave you one last one here because we're a little over time and we've got to take a break. Ashley Parker, the 40% of undecided New Hampshire voters. Those undecided New Hampshire voters are trying to choose between liberal Democrats and conservative Republicans. <laughs> They haven't made their mind up. <laughs> they don't know if they want a liberal Democrat or a conservative Republican. This is this you can't write stuff like this. This is <laughs> just great stuff. We gotta go to a break. When we come back, we'll continue with the jocularity here at the Conservative Syndicate. We'll be right back. You can catch all our archives at the Conservative Syndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate. Real conservative talk from real conservatives. Term life insurance. It can be a powerful way to protect your assets and your family. You work hard to earn and save your money to build a nest egg for the future. Don't let it get wiped out because you didn't plan ahead. Take the time now and make a small investment in a half million dollars or more in quality term life insurance. Call the term lifeline and let us shop the best companies to give you the lowest rates. We specialize in policies of a half million dollars and above. Ask about some of our 10 and 20 year fixed rate plans with guaranteed rates. Call the Term Lifeline right now for your free insurance quote. 800-870-3609. 800-870-3609. You owe it to yourself to protect your family and your assets. Make Term Life Insurance part of that plan. Call the Term Lifeline right now. 800-870-3609. 800-870-3609. Hey folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a Ph.D. in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. 
Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. I'm your host, John Matthews, along with Joe Hakos, my co-host. I, I, I've just been relaying to you some of the tweets that I've been seeing out there in uh, Twitter world uh, that, that I just find rather comical, things that are just kind of making me chuckle uh, as, I, as I read them. And uh, one of the things I just talked about or I just mentioned was um, Ashley Parker. I guess she's one of the people, you know, they, they have people, I guess, at the precincts, and the people are tr- uh, tweeting in from the precincts what they're seeing and what they're hearing. And um, I'm going to go over here to another guy, Jeff Zelaney, who I guess is at one of the precincts. And he says that the most overheard thing that he's hearing at the polling place where he's at by the people that, you know, with the people that are giving him a ballot. I, I don't know how this works out, but this is, he said the most common thing I'm hearing is the question would you like to go back to being an independent when you're done? <laughs> so I guess people may be coming in and uh, uh, maybe re-registering or something. Now, one of the things I saw, this is interesting, Joe, uh, and I'm not real sure here uh, if uh, this is maybe something that should be done more, um, I don't know, should be done more. Um, they were talking about they have what they call a, uh, a challenge vote. And what people do uh, is they come in and they're saying uh, they want to register to, or they want to register the vote. They haven't registered the vote, and they're coming in and they want to vote. And so uh, I forget what we call it out here in California. But anyway, um, what they do is they let you vote, but then you have to fill out a form, and they take your picture. Yeah, and, here it's called a provisional ballot. Provisional, but that's the word I was thinking. Thank you. So uh, in New Hampshire, they're, they're allowing people to vote, but they have to actually register and then, I guess, uh, have a picture taken to verify that that's who they are. Okay, so that's, I guess that's their voter ID up in New Hampshire. Yeah, whatever. I mean, when you have an open primary like this, this is ridiculous. This is the reason why open primaries aren't a good idea because you have other people that could care less about uh, the, who, who wins in a certain party. You know, they could, you know, these Democrats coming in could care less about whatever the, the Republicans. Uh, voting in this, you know, whatever the candidate is, because they could pick the worst candidate. If we had, like, uh, I don't know, uh, let's see, uh, Captain Hook was a Republican, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he wouldn't get elected to be president because he's only got a hook in one hand. That, you know, he, he lost his arm. And so people aren't going to vote for the one arm guy, you know. They're, they're going to go right back to the fugitive kind of thing. So, so the Democrats are all going to get together and vote for Captain See, Mississippi. For crying out loud, that's what you, uh, uh, Tad, Tad Cochran down right. in Mississippi, that's what you get. You get people voting in these people, and that's what you're stuck with because these people don't care. So an open primary is is not a good. Unfortunately, here in Florida, it's a closed primary. So you got to pick a side. Well, yeah, we, see, we had the same problem out here in California uh, with the uh, governor's race out here. It went to an open primary. And people uh, wanted, they didn't want Tim Donnelly to win. Tim Donnelly was a guy who went in, uh, with, you know, like uh, two months out, double-digit lead over everybody else. He'd been campaigning for two years, out walking, you know, walking the precincts, knocking on doors. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, we had him on this show a couple of times. I've eaten lunch with the guy, a, a hardcore, straight-down-the-line conservative. And he was really rocking the boat out here. And everybody just thought, oh, man, we, we got a shot of getting a real Republican, a real conservative in office. And what happens, they change it to an open primary. And so all the Democrats go and vote for, uh, what's his name, Neil, I uh, forget what his name is, that, um, uh, Cash Carry, Neil Cash Carry. And Neil Cash Carry wins by three points, goes up against Jerry Brown and gets sh- schlonged. Just uh, just buried. I think Brown beat him 60 to 30 or something like that. So yeah. the open primary thing is really disastrous. It's really yeah. bad, really bad. You can see what they did. They, they knew that, that they, if they didn't do that, they'd have a real tough time 
getting right. Brown reelected. So they just went with the guy they knew they could get in there, and he knew they knew for a fact that that a guy was going to lose. It's the yeah. same thing here. It's the same thing. It's basically a lot of the same things you see before. Yeah, politics is a dirty business, but you know you could do it smartly in some of these states. It just tells you what kind of state legislature you have that would allow that to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, one of one of the other things that's kind of comical about this, um, you know, Rick Santorum dropped out of the race and immediately endorsed uh, Marco Rubio. Robot. He was on Robot. Morning Joe. Did you see that? He was on. Well, he was on MSNBC's Morning Joe. Well, he this, knew that's where he'd get the greatest uh, effect and audience going on that show. Yeah, well, well, yeah, you're not. You don't. You don't. But no, it was no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've never watched it. I have never. I, I have to be honest. I've never watched it. But I see his name mentioned a lot. But he had um, Rick Santorum on his show this morning, asking him why he chose to endorse Rubio. Now, <laughs> listen to this. This is what. Uh, Rick Santorum, or yeah, this is what Rick Santorum responded to the question, why did you vote, or why are you endorsing Marco Rubio? And Rick Santorum says, if you look at the begin, uh, if you look at being in the minority in the United States Senate in a year when nothing got, four years where nothing got done, I guess it's hard to say there are any accomplishments. I mean, tell me what happened during that four years that was an accomplishment for anyone. It was a complete gridlock. So what he's saying is um, because, Rick, uh, because Marco Rubio is a minority in the United States Senate and a Senate that nothing ever got done in the four years that he's been there or going on the four years that he's been there, he's a the first term. But yeah, it would be four years. They, they get elected every six, right? I guess it's hard to say there are accomplishments. <laughs> now, that was immediately picked up by all the Republicans out there that are running that, hey, Centorum himself, who was endorsing Marco Rubio, is telling us that the guy hasn't done anything. So that would support Chris Christie, which I would say, okay, so maybe what we need to do is give the fat guy the vote. I don't know. The fat guy vote? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Christie's got that one wrapped up, dude. I don't know, but that's funny. That's funny. Rick Santorum going out there trying to endorse Marco Rubio by saying nothing got done in the Senate. So why are you hammering on Marco Rubio? And besides, he's a minority. Wow. There, there's some reasoning for you. Rick Santorum just fell yeah. off my, my – I used to think he was a great guy list, you know, because I always thought of him as a conservative. If this is actually his reasoning off the campaign trail, he might as well go join Lindsey Graham – you know, they might as well just drink wine together or something. That that's insane. That's nuts. So, anyhow, that that's uh, that's my take on that. Um, anything else? Any anything else that's uh, on your mind here, Joe? What you've been seeing out there? Well, the polls are going to close in about two minutes. Most of the polls will close in about two minutes. Uh, some polls will be closing in uh, sixty-two minutes. Okay, so we'll uh, we should start probably by the time we get. Ron Edwards on next hour. We should start we, seeing something out there. Yeah, we might see more than nine votes cast for a candidate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you'll probably, if you're listening, again, if you're listening to us out there on High Plains Radio or yeah. SHR Media, you'll probably get more in substance in terms of actual results with Dan Butcher and uh, Behind Enemy Lines, the other show that will follow after that. Dan Butcher will be on uh, after us when we get off the air here at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 out there in the East Coast, and uh, then after that, 10 o'clock on the East Coast, that would be 7 o'clock out here, would be uh, behind enemy lines. And there, by then, you should we should have a pretty good idea who's wrapped this thing up and what the numbers are going to be. Um, know, right now, though, night, we're coming actually. up to the top of the hour here, and uh, it's time for the Edwards Notebook, and so we'll do that, pay some bills, and we'll be back. Stay with us. Right here at the Conservative Syndicate. We'll be right back. For years, various Muslim armies have been foolishly built or rebuilt at U.S. taxpayer expense. Remember the Iraqi army that was supposedly trained and equipped by U.S. military personnel? Hello, I'm Ron Edwards. When the ISIS Muslim terrorists went on their rampage throughout Iraq, the Iraqi soldiers trained by U.S. military personnel took off running like scared little rabbits. 
in Afghanistan. Muslim personnel trained by U.S. instructors have proven to be nothing more than well-trained but useless soldiers in the fight against the Muslim enemies of liberty. At one time or another, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Iran, Iraq, Yemen, even Sudan have either directly or indirectly benefited from U.S. military know-how and or equipment. With the exception of the brave Kurdish warriors, Muslim nations have proven to be a waste of U.S. time and taxpayer money with no worthwhile return on the investment. In fact, the idea of training Muslims to fight other Muslims is one of monumental stupidity, with the only exception being the pro-Western Kurds. Other than the Kurds, Muslims have no desire to get along with the infidels. Their long-term goal is to convert them, enslave them, rape them, or kill them. Wake up, America. I'm Ron Edwards. Catch all our archives at theconservativesyndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment and credit qualification require cancellation fee, auto pay and paperless billing and other restrictions apply. If you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? Switch to DISH for the best deal in entertainment. Only DISH brings you the best in entertainment for less than $20 a month. Cut the cable and don't get directed. Switch to DISH because at just nineteen ninety nine, DISH saves you every time you turn on the TV. It's so simple. The same channels cost less with DISH. So since you can't see the difference don't pay the difference switch to dish for the best deal in entertainment get premium movie channels free for three months starting at just 1999 dish saves you every time you turn on the tv call now to save with dish dial 1-800-600-1645 that's 1-800-600-1645 the same channels for less than 20 bucks a month dish call 1-800-600-1645 for details Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 866-761-0959. one 866 one six one zero nine five nine. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately. Call the special tax hotline today for free info at one eight six six seven six one zero nine five nine. That's one eight six six seven six one zero nine five nine. One eight six six seven six one zero nine five nine. Read something recently worth thinking about. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who's given us freedom to demonstrate. It's the soldier, not the reporter, who's given us freedom of the press. It's the soldier, not the poet, who's given us freedom of speech. It's the soldier who serves under the flag, who defends the protester's right to burn the flag. Isn't it time now to demonstrate that we support our troops? Were it not for the brave, there'd be no land of the free. Fred Thompson's message was brought to you by CitizensUnited.org. can do is just tell the truth and trust in the American people that over time uh, they're going to uh, know what the truth is. Yes, it is time for the truth right here, right now. This is the Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives with your host, John Matthews. The latter day prophet. Saying against the hypocrisies of our time. And Joe Hankos. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. The conservative syndicate is comprised of some of the most informed pundits and activists available today. 
together, we seek to tear down the imaginary wall of separation between church and state through education, information, and engagement on the religion of politics and the politics of religion. And now, your host on the globally syndicated conservative syndicate, John Matthews and Joe Hakos. Conservative syndicate, nationally acclaimed, globally syndicated. Uh, heard well, I guess that means well, uh, heard around the world, and and even in the Federation, the National Federation of Planets picks up our show. They got to pick up our show. If for nothing else, so what? Who are those wackos? Okay, so you know, in, in, in the National Federation of Planet Planets, there are no conservatives. By the way. You, you got to understand that everybody in, on Star Trek is a liberal. And, and that, that's a fact. That's a fact. Because where else would you find a National Federation of Planets? You know? And I'm, I'm just throwing that out there for you to think about. You know, when that day comes, Spock could actually be a Democrat because I guess it's logical. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> enough of that, huh? <laughs> Uh, I, I, I thought there was more humor in that. I, I guess it just wasn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm flat today. Maybe my humor is just, my humor meter is just off kilter. Voltariate. Yeah, it needs to be calibrated or something. I don't know. But um, so we're, we're uh, you know, one of the things, let's talk about something a little bit serious right now. Hey, hey, check this out, John. What? You remember our friend, Mr. Smith, Michael Smith? Who? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Smith? Yeah, he just uh, he posted this up a little while ago. I found it interesting, and uh, see if it doesn't tr- hit truly home. I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let my computer take over here and, and let this uh, let this go ahead. And it's just a real short uh, little little thing that he just posted not too long ago, and it does kind of make sense. Uh, so check this out. All right, see if we can make this happen here. Back in March of 2015, BT before Trump, I wrote this post. One wonders what it will take for the majority of America to realize that we no longer have a legitimate government. Reading the Declaration of Independence used to make me feel proud to be an American. Now it just makes me sad. We have to remember that blind faith in democracy is often misplaced. The belief that democracy is equivalent to freedom is simply wrong. Democracy is a feature of both free and communist states. Marx envisioned a total and direct democracy he defined as a dictatorship of the proletariat. But history proves that attempts at communism always wind up being a dictatorship over the proletariat. Democracy in a free, representative republic can have the same result, allowing for the rise of a strongman government that dominates the citizenry. It occurs to me that on occasion I do agree with Glenn Beck. On the way to work this morning, I heard him say that this election is a choice between socialism, the constitution and a strong man. I think he is right. Sanders and Clinton both advocate socialism. Cruz is the only candidate talking about the Constitution. Now that Rand Paul is out, and Trump represents the arrogant promise of revenge that every strongman always promises. We are what we choose. Yeah, he wrote that back in March. Uh, This is like uh, he's trying to take your job as being a mad prophet. Nobody can take that because that is divinely uh, assigned. <laughs> Just saying, he's. Uh, I think he's applying. But but he's definitely spot on. That's for sure. Yeah, that was uh, you know back in March of last year. Yeah. So yeah. that's just uh, wow. Well, and, you know there uh, are more has, than wrong, true or not. I'm not. I'm not the only prophet out here gracing the airways. I'm just the only mad one. <laughs> <laughs> mad, <I> tell you. <laughs> I'm the only one crazy enough to say what nobody else wants to say and say it in a way that nobody else would say it. Wow, that, that, that's, that, that is very true. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, spot on, spot on. And uh, I, I like the uh, I like the Max Stein effect on the voice too. That was probably kind of cool. Uh, well, you know, that's just coming out of the computer. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yes, that's the computer talking to you. That's not me. It's the robot. Oh man, I I just thought you know. It, if I ever had my choice of accents, I'd want to sound like my, my, uh, Max Stein. Max Stein, just, yeah. Yeah, you know, because he sounds so smart. Yeah. And, well, and he actually says smart things. And, you know, it's a, I've heard some very stupid people with very nice accents. You know, Helen Mirren, for instance. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, I wonder if that, that 
that bossy little whatever. Well, whatever. you know, it's it, it, that that's one of those things. I, I I have this theory that I keep floating at, and that is that you know when God uh, when people choose liberalism, God allows them to be good at one thing, and everything else they suck at. And you know, when I think of people like Helen Mirren, I, she is a great actress. I've seen her in many movies. She is a really, really good actress. And I've seen her in multiple roles, and she's good in everything. I've never seen a movie in th- which I thought she was bad in. Like Meryl Streep, same way. I've never really seen a movie that Meryl Streep was bad in, except Mamma Mia. And, uh, but when you listen to them talk about anything other than their latest movie, or what the industry is about, the actual movie industry, they're dumb as rocks. I mean, they're not even close to being intelligent. How dare you insult rocks? <laughs> and it kind of makes me uh, you know, wonder that God just says, okay, I'll let you be good at this and you'll make lots of money. But in terms of any sort of reality and, and any reason or logic, now, you don't get any of that. We'll give that to, we'll give that to other people, you know. Uh, it, 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 that could be the only reasoning here. But then again, you know, Hollywood is, a, is, built, is an industry that is built on illusion. That is very true. Okay, always, it is. They believe pe- in it. Yeah, it's people who aren't happy. Most people, you really read biographies of most people in Hollywood. The more famous they are, the more dysfunctional they were as children. You know, they, they, they come from bad homes or, you know, they, they were rebels. They, they didn't like to, uh, to obey and stuff like that. Most of them, most of them, uh, although there are exceptions now, but most of them never finish high school. You know, they go out and they just they get into Hollywood and they do their thing and they become good at what they do, pretending to be something they're not. That that's, you know, you make millions of dollars pretending to be something you're not. And then what happens is somewhere along the line, you seem to think that that makes you something that makes you into a real person. Makes you a subject matter expert on on anything and everything. I on mean, anything you think you wanted to be, because all you have to do is study up on. I'm going to watch, you know, I'm going to watch the bird watcher, and I'm yeah, going to be the best yeah. bird watcher out there because I watched a bird watcher once, and so the bird watcher does this, and I know I'm an expert now because I watched the bird yeah, watcher. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like, how many people during uh, when Martin Sheen was in that show, The West Wing? You know, there were people that actually thought he was a the president. There were people yes. out there that thought he was a president. Yes, because he was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was. And that other guy, uh, what's his name? The guy that was in, uh, you know, Animal House. Uh, oh, uh, Kevin um, Bacon. Was it Kevin Bacon? No. Yeah, Kevin Who Bacon? was that guy? I don't know. But, you know, we got this problem now with Leah Tioni, who I think is another great actress. But she's in a series now, Madam Secretary. Yes, yeah, she's a secretary of state. And everybody thinks that she's profiling Hillary Clinton. Could be. <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> could uh, be. Well, where else would you find that but CBS? Why, you why know? would they have a female secretary of state when we have a man doing it now? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just hey, saying. it's our short break here. we got to take a, a break here, Do a, run a couple of commercials. We'll be back. Ron Edwards should be joining us momentarily. On, Stay with us right here at the Conservative Syndicate. Don't go away. You can catch all our archives at theconservativesyndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment and credit qualification require cancellation fee, auto pay and paperless billing and other restrictions apply. If you can't see the difference, why pay the difference? Switch to DISH for the best deal in entertainment. Only DISH brings you the best in entertainment for less than $20 a month. Cut the cable and don't get directed. Switch to DISH because at just nineteen ninety nine, DISH saves you every time you turn on the TV. It's so simple. The same channels cost less with DISH. So since you can't see the difference don't pay the difference switch to dish for the best deal in entertainment get premium movie channels free for three months starting at just 1999 dish saves you every time you turn on the tv call now to save with dish dial 1-800-600-1645 that's 1-800-600-1645 the same channels for less than 20 bucks a month dish call 1-800-600-1645 for details 
Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 866-761-0959. one 866 When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately. Call this special tax hotline today for free info at 1-866-761-0959. That's 1-866-761-0959. 1-866-761-0959. Folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a Ph.D. in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. Hinkle's my co-host from Dryer Report, and right now we want to bring back and welcome back Ron Edwards from the Edwards Notebook. How are you doing tonight, Ron? I'm doing well. How are you and Joe? We are doing most excellent here. We're having kind of a, it's kind of a light day here. We're just I've having... missed you, Ron. I've missed you. <laughs> yeah, I've missed you guys too. <laughs> yeah, we're yep. just having some fun uh, here. We've just been it's been a, a, an hour of jocularity here, just kind of just picking up loose ends and just having some fun with what's going on out there in this uh, primary season. Probably one of the wackiest I've ever been involved in. Uh, I can't remember one wackier. Uh, One of the things I am getting, though, we are starting to get some feedback on the blogs here. And uh, the first two things I'm noticing or the first two things I'm reading about, Holly Bailey, who's one of the media uh, heads out there, she's trying to get into the Donald Trump um, headquarters or rally wherever he's going to be showing up should he win or lose or whatever happens in between. She's saying that the media line is so long at the Trump, uh, at the Trump headquarters that they don't even know if they're going to get in in time to start reporting anything. But the other thing I'm hearing from Christopher Wilson out there is that uh, they had a very large last-minute surge of voters at, a, some, at several other precincts. So they're not really even sure if they're going to be able to shut the polls down at 7 o'clock like they're supposed to be. Like, they should be closed right now. And apparently they're still allowing people to vote. I'm not really sure. But they're saying we should start getting some results here by uh, another 10, 15 minutes here. They should start being able to start punching out some numbers. So, Ron, uh, we haven't talked to you in a while. What, give us your take here. What do you think is going on here with the Trump phenomenon? Well, uh, it's been one of the most interesting uh, election cycles uh, in, in memory uh, in, since I've been around, anyway, covering these type of, of, of events. And uh, Trump is still, um, you know, I have to credit him for creating a, an atmosphere of excitement and interest uh, in the race. And even though he's on the other side of the ledger, I have to admit that Bernie Sanders, too, has uh, created a bit of excitement, a lot of excitement, especially uh, the younger voters. Sadly, um, so many young people uh, really like Mr. Sanders, despite the fact that he's an open we uh, admit it, a uh, socialist. And uh, that's kind of scary. And you, he has a very, very high rating amongst the millennials. And that, in my opinion, is pretty disturbing. But uh, you got to give him credit. At least he's beating, beating out uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> so there, there's something good about him. But uh, it, it's really uh, interesting. And uh, we're going to see. Uh, if Mr. Trump is going to be able to hold on or hang in there, as they say, 
because uh, in recent weeks we've seen some of the establishment guys beginning to inch up. And as I believe as the field, as we go further into the season, as the field begins to, to winnow down, uh, you're going to see more of a uh, uh, an even horse race as some of the uh, establishment guys begin to uh, collect a head of steam. And uh, people like Jeb Bush, uh, much to my chagrin, but uh, he is beginning to gain some traction, as well as uh, some of the others, even John Kasich, uh, my, my governor in, in Ohio, uh, surprisingly is, is gaining some interest. I personally don't understand why, but he is anyway. Uh, but um, as you said, John, it's uh, pretty interesting, and uh, you know, it's going to uh, America is at a, at a real crossroads. She's uh, got us some real decisions to make this time around, and we're believing that uh, folks like Trump uh, and uh, Cruz will, um, you know, do some some good things as we head towards the election. Of the general election. Well, one thing, one thing that seems pretty obvious to me uh, this time around, and, and it seems very evident, some of the things I've heard and in interviews that I've heard and stuff like that, is we're hearing comments. Um, a lot of the people that are voting, like we were just talking earlier about one of the voters that showed up to vote for Trump and found out that he was actually a registered Democrat. And we, we know that uh, some of the polls, like uh, Reuters, are, have been showing or indicating that uh, there are a lot of people that are showing up to the polls, some of them for the first time, finally thinking, you know, this is, yeah, I'm going to get out and vote this time around, or some of them who have been absent, apparently like this gentleman who didn't even mm-hmm. remember what party he was registered with. And that, <laughs> in that sense, I guess it, you have to, uh, as you were saying, give Trump some credit for being able to um, inspire, for lack of a better word, to get people out and vote. But the point is, is that these people are still now, I don't know if it's better that they would have stayed home because it seems like there's an awful lot of ignorance uh, in most of these people that are getting up and voting. And, and rather than identifying with an ideology, they're just basically identifying with the rhetoric that, uh, you know, they're angry and, and Trump is uh, articulating that anger. And I'm not so sure that voting because you're angry just strictly on anger is is any wiser than uh, than than voting uh, because you're a liberal? You know, it doesn't seem to me to be very productive in that way. And we could actually end up with somebody in worse uh, that's worse than Barack Obama. Trump seems, in a lot of ways, to me, at least ego wise, equal to or even greater uh, narcissist than Barack Obama. What do you think? Well, he has a huge ego. That's that's uh, self evident. But I don't think that uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, in any way, shape, or form, can be as evil as uh, or as bad for the United States of America as uh, you know the imam in the White House. No way, Jose. I really don't believe that. Uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Trump, uh, if he decides, if he is who he says he is, I mean, no one really knows but the man himself and, and God. But if he is who he says he is, I think he has a chutzpah to fight to get things done. You know, when he talks about the military, rebuilding the military and, and, and making sure that our border is are more better protected, things of that nature, uh, strengthening the United States, or what's his slogan, uh, making America great again. I believe that he has the ego, the, the drive to do something like that. Um, I still to this, I go, I ask him how. Like Bernie Sanders, I go, how much? I ask Trump, how? <laughs> Just tell me how. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if any of you guys have ever gone to his website, uh, though he, in, in my opinion, has not uh, very well explained in detail how he's going to do some of the things that he promises to do. Um, many of those subjects are well addressed on his website, which did pleasantly surprise me. Which, uh, which, is, which, which, which makes me go, wow, yes, all those voters that are going up to Donald Trump as Democrats, uh, as this guy did today, <laughs> Yeah, they really go to the website. They're, on. They're really reading about him. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, you, you guys might remember there was a lot of Democrats who, who switched over and voted for Ronald Reagan. Uh, probably they were more informed than these guys, sound <laughs> to be, but uh, there was a lot of that crossover. And, you know, New Hampshire has a, a history of that. Uh, you know, you can do that there. People are crossing lines all the time. 
in their elections, in their uh, primary elections. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. And I, I, I also like... Uh, I think it's going to be sorry? a long night. I think it's going to be a long evening. Yeah. yeah, they said that most of the poll. I'm looking here. Most of the polls. I mean, most of the polls are closed. Yep. Uh, we got uh, you know some of the exit polls. Um, they have oh, well, uh, not, fact, there's one. I, I I'm looking at it pictures down 24%. here. They got they got people posting pictures out here of lines, the cars, just the cars trying to get into the dry into the parking lots, is two miles yeah. long, trying to get into vote. Yeah, maybe. So I mean, maybe, that's maybe right network. now. This is real time at seven yeah. nineteen. They got a, a line out here trying to get in Merrimack, two miles long, just to get into the parking Whoa. lot. Yes, yes, and, and officials have been granted permission to stay open for as long as the moderator deems necessary. Right. So they're going to keep them open. But I, I, I want to address. Like, I want to address something here that you said, Ron. Um, okay. The, the wording that you used was, uh, "If Trump does what he says he's going to do." OK, and, and, and I, I'm with Joe and I are both very adamant about this. He's great at telling us what he's going to do. He has yet to tell us how he's going to do it. And one of the things that is in particular, like we're looking here at New Hampshire, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people. The New Hampshire legislator is getting ready to vote on expanding Medicaid. Donald Trump has not committed or promised that he would abolish or get rid of Medicaid if he was elected president. Now, we know Medicaid is the key to Obamacare. That is how, that's, you know, all these numbers that people are touting that we got all these people signed up for Obamacare and they're all picking health plans and all this, that, and the other. Most of those people that are in Obamacare are through Medicaid, the expansion of Medicaid. And Medicaid is the vehicle that Bernie Sanders wants to use to basically convert the entire health system into single payer. So right away we've got Trump saying he's not he's not willing to do, he doesn't like Obamacare, but when you say well what about doing away with Medicaid which is the key to Obamacare, he's like no, I'm not going to commit to whether I'd get rid of that or not. See that that well, tells you know me what? there's a guy that's just telling us what we want to hear. Well, see but you have to remember and maybe uh maybe he's not aware because Medicaid was in existence long before Obamacare, and maybe in his mind he thinks that he can get rid of Obamacare and maintain uh, what has been in existence for quite a long time, Medicaid. So Medicare, rather. So uh, maybe he needs to be uh, made aware, more aware of the situation, or maybe he is deceiving us. We really don't know, but I will stick to my guns in saying that uh, he is saying some some very good things concerning the country in support of the United States of America, um, a lot better than uh, than uh, Bush and and some of the others. Um, and we really don't know what any of them will do. I mean, we do have a background on uh, people like uh, Jeb and a few of the others, but when it comes to when they get in that Oval Office, we really don't know. But. Trump is saying a lot of the right things for those of us who want this nation to be turned around. And it just comes down to who do we trust and are we making the right choice? And up to this point, I still say is that, uh, that uh, Trump is probably the best answer because uh, you look at Cruz, great guy. He says a lot of the right things, but he's for that horrible trade agreement, that T TPP and some other things. So, and I don't completely trust Cruz when it comes to the border situation. Even though he has said he would close the borders, there are some indicators that in reality he may not be so so uh, enamored with the idea of truly closing our borders. So you really don't know. It just comes down to who do you trust and, um, and you, you making that personal choice. And, th and that in and of itself is what scares the bejeebies out of me. Is that we're sitting here saying we don't know. We don't know what will happen. And and that is not yeah. the place we need to be right now. Right now, yeah. we didn't know what was going to happen when Barack Obama was elected. We know now. And and to sit here and and, ha and, and maintain <clears throat> as well, you know, Trump, if he does what he's going to, says he's going to do, okay, you know, <laughs> that's great. But that but, isn't but something you know that, I, that's why I'm more of a Cruz guy. 
I know what Cruz yeah. will at least try to do. He may not have Congress on his side, but I don't think Trump's going to be any more friendly with this Congress than anybody else other than the Democrats. I think the Democrats will be wide open making deals because that's what they've been doing. The Republicans, on the other hand, don't want to govern at all. So I don't think I don't see any 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 uh, uh, reality in terms of Mitch McConnell one day is going to wake up. Oh, Donald Trump's president. Yeah, let's talk deals. I don't think that's going to happen. It, well, it, I think that Trump is more of a forceful individual. Uh, I just think that, I mean, look at his history in the business world. Yeah, you should look at his history. Yeah, and his history doesn't support anything that he's saying right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh-oh. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. Okay, Ron. It's all right. I, I hate to paint you, you in a corner on your first day back, Ron, but you've, know, you just set yourself you, up. You know what? I can't. I cannot uh, beat up against the facts. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying because I, I, I do believe in what he's saying. I, I, I like what I say. What he is saying. Maybe, I, maybe that's the better thing to say. I yeah. do yeah, like well, what he, the man is it, saying. Well, my my thing on, on this country. is this: if you like what he's saying, make him your press secretary. <laughs> you know, oh. don't put him in the White House. <laughs> we got to go to a break, yeah. guys. We got to go to a break. I, was, I hate to interrupt you here, but we're we're, we're over time okay. here. Uh, it's time for dryer sheet right now. We'll be right back with uh, Joe Hakos, myself, and Ron Edwards from the Edwards Notebook. Don't go away. Hello, humans. Time to open the brain and remove all that static coin. It's time to insert a dryer sheet. Well. 2016 is upon us and America is in full-blown presidential election mode. And there is one thing that the media says is different this time around, that being Donald Trump. But is he really different? The billionaire real estate mogul from New York City, they say, is an outsider, not a politician. But is that really an apt description of the mouth that is roaring? I think not. While Donald Trump might not have been elected to public office. He certainly knows what it takes to be in public office. You don't just vote. You buy your public official, which he has stated quite proudly over and over at his overbooked campaign events. The mouth of New York City has gleefully told us of his exploits of being able to buy, I mean, oh, I mean, donate to political campaigns. He tells America that it's all part of doing business. Well, that may be, but it is who he has bought favors from that should be a point of contention with the base of the Republican Party of which he is trying to garner the presidential nomination from during this primary election season. He has donated to such conservative Republican stalwarts like Hillary Clinton, Harry Reid in Nevada, Charlie Rangel of New York, and when that becomes too much effort. The Donald buys a committee, such as the Democratic Centurial Campaign Committee. Oh, wait, did I say conservative causes and candidates? Oh, I'm sorry, but my, uh, my memory serves me correctly. None of these great people and causes are even close to being conservatives. Hmm, that is strange. Wow, to hear the New York City mouth now, you think he's been on the side of the Republican base for decades, when in reality, he's been actively fighting against Republican base for years. Makes one wonder what has changed. Has the base of the Republican Party changed? Does it believe that making deals with the likes of Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and Charles Schumer is, is the way to make America great again? Well, I think that I'm going to be able to get along with Pelosi. I think I'm going to be able to. I've always had a good relationship with Nancy Pelosi. I've never had a problem. Reed's going to be gone. I always had a decent relationship with Reed. Although lately, obviously, I haven't been dealing with him. So they'll actually use my name as the ultimate, uh, you know, as the ultimate of the billionaires in terms of, uh, you know, people you don't want. But I always had a great relationship with Harry Reed. And frankly, if I weren't running for office, I'd be able to deal with her. I'd be able to deal with Reed. I'd be able to deal with anybody. But, but I think I'd be able to get along very well with uh, with Nancy Pelosi and just about everybody. Hey, look, I think I'd be able to get along well with Schumer, Chuck Schumer. I was always very good with Schumer. I was close to Schumer in many ways. I don't think so. While in 2010, 2012, and 2014, Republicans were overwhelmingly elected to go to the respective seats of office, many replacing Democratic officials. 
Donald Trump was buying influence and working against the base of the Republican Party. It would seem that the Trump money failed for the most part as Republicans gained more legislative seats than in any time in modern history. Yet, there are those, despite claiming to be conser- of the conservative persuasion, are full throatedly supported in the mouth because he can win. The man has made this election about himself. Every twist and turn of his campaign is about him. He boycotts a debate because he said he was treated unfairly. He is going to get Mexico to pay for a border wall. He is going to make the Chinese trade fairly with America. Me, 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 me. Well, folks, listen up. This election isn't about Donald Trump or any of the candidates running for the presidency. This is about the people of Iowa, the people of New Hampshire. Most importantly, it's about you and me and your neighbor down the street and next door. This election is about all the people of the United States making deals, buying political hacks, and whining when some media type offends you, and then running down the street to use our nation's military veterans as props is not leadership. We have a self-absorbed narcissist in the White House now. Each and every day, I've heard conservative base of the Republican Party scream from the mountaintop that this nation is without leadership. Well, putting another self-absorbed narcissist named Donald Trump in the White House will not provide the leadership this nation so desperately desires. Are we so inept in reasoning that we will allow a man who has made no secret about who he is, enter the White House and be allowed to operate the office of president in the same fashion as Barack Obama? But that would be okay because he has an R after his name? We can do better than this, America. We have to if we truly are to make America great again. Well, this dryer sheet is used up. Till next time, stay static free. Catch all our archives at theconservativesyndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives. Term life insurance. It can be a powerful way to protect your assets and your family. You work hard to earn and save your money to build a nest egg for the future. Don't let it get wiped out because you didn't plan ahead. Take the time now and make a small investment in a half million dollars or more in quality term life insurance. Call the Term Lifeline and let us shop the best companies to give you the lowest rates. We specialize in policies of a half million dollars and above. Ask about some of our 10 and 20 year fixed rate plans with guaranteed rates. Call the Term Lifeline right now for your free insurance quote. 800-870-3609. 800-870-3609. You owe it to yourself to protect your family and your assets. Make term life insurance part of that plan. Call the Term Lifeline right now. 800-870-3609. 800-870-3609. Hey folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a Ph.D. in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. Real conservative talk from real conservatives. I'm your host, John Matthews, along with Joe Hakos, my co-host from Dry Report, and making his return debut with us, Ron Edwards from the Edwards Notebook, who just promptly stepped right into the hot seat as soon as he came on the show today. And, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Good and, uh, job, I, I guess I should have uh, given you some I, I warning, Ron, about how much we are anti-Trump. 
<laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, I, I enjoyed it, though. I mean, uh, you did a good job. Don't totally agree with it, but, uh, I, you know, you think Bush, you think Christie, you think Fiorina. I think Carson would do well, but no one wants to vote for him. Do you think any of those others would be any better than Trump, um, Bush, Christie, uh, or Fiorina? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking okay. any. Well, no. certainly no. anybody but Bush. What do you think, Joe? <laughs> and, we, and we got yeah, exactly. Bush uh, jab exclamation point is John's favorite candidate. Candidate, by the way, and so he's been that way for months. And uh, I mean, there's reports that you know Ben's out there going. Well, I wouldn't mind being Donald's uh, VP. It's like, come on. Then if you're gonna just yeah. come on, he's lost it. He's he's caved in. He's just uh, lost it, and uh, I don't know what what happened to him. But, uh, you know, I'm I looking mean, here. I mean, to, he's a smart guy doing uh, dumb things. It's, come on. Yeah. You know, and the, and the thing, Which you know, a lot sad. of people were talking about his, his style of, um, you know, campaigning, his, his mild manner. Well, people forget that that is just the, the manner in which, you know, he had to have a quiet bedside manner uh, because of his profession for so many years as a, as a neurosurgeon and for children at that. And so he's been this calm uh, guy, and you know yeah. he's been you know talking to parents about opening up their children's skulls and and, and working on their brains. So he's got to be that way. So he needs someone. It would seem that that someone in his camp would have told him, or, or given him a shock or something to liven him up. Uh, you know, to let him know, hey, buddy, you got to energize yourself and 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 to look, you know, wake up. Well, his but, his uh, his whole uh, campaign's been uh, riddled with uh, ineptitude for a while now. I mean, they were spending money. He's fired a bunch of people here and there already. There's just been upheaval in his campaign all, all around. So it just uh, it's kind of sad. And you know what? The guy. Do you would you say he's trustworthy? Yeah, I would say he's very trustworthy. Unlike a lot of the other ones. Yeah. 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 But you can blame the ineptitude on, in his campaign on. His campaign manager, one Armstrong Williams, who yep. uh, portrays himself as a conservative, he is not. He is the one that advised Mr. Carson just to back off. If you remember earlier on, he had talked about uh, the need for America not to let in Muslims and, and things of that sort. And Mr. Armstrong Williams told him to back off of those types of comments, that we need to get along with them. And he's really bought into the, to the Armstrong Williams a way of thinking, which is very surprising to me, because before that, he was much more conservative than that. And having spoken to him, you know, mano a mano, uh, he, he's not sounding like the same individual that I met and talked with since well, since this uh, Armstrong Williams took over uh, the I, campaign. I think the issue with Carson is very simple, very simple to understand. He has spent his life in a career dealing with people that honor and integrity are at the foundation of everything they do and think. And to step into something like the political realm where everything is BS, lies, spin, smear, he's just out of his element. He's just not, he's not in where he's, it's not his place. It's not his calling. He, uh, you know, I, I have talked about in this show uh, a lot about he would be one of the first guys so I would approach in my, I'd want this guy in my cabinet. I think put him in, in charge of health services. You know, he he would be a great guy for something like our Surgeon General or something, something where he could use uh, his honesty and his integrity and his experience as an intelligence. Uh, you'd want this guy at the table talking about issues and how how do we resolve them and how do we get the government out of our our lives uh, to to yeah. a great degree. You know, how do we reverse this? So I I like the guy. I respect him immensely. I just think he's just way in over his head, just way, way yeah. over his head. Well, like I said, this campaign manager has made things much worse because he is not sounding like the gentleman that he sounded like when he first started out. He, he really doesn't. Yeah. And uh, it's just been downhill. And I, I really, really feel bad for the guy because I think he could have been very good for the country. And he will be. I, I think, think he still is someone... good for the country. Yeah, I, I absolutely think he's still going to be good for good. I hope he just doesn't yeah. go away into, and fade into the woodwork. I hope yeah. he stays out in the public realm and at least is allowed to. Unlike, I, I don't want him to do the, the, the idiocy like Sarah Palin did, though, yeah. uh, or is doing. I just. You know, I don't want to become a a, a, a walking punchline. Right, 
Right. Yeah. You don't. You don't yeah. want this guy out there trying to carry the torch for anything. You want to, You want him on your team doing something. That. That's how I look at a guy like Ben Carson. He's not. He's not charismatic, and and he's not. He just doesn't have that ability. But that's not his skill. His skill is obviously to be able to take things and analyze them and come up with a a, a decent response. And that that's what they, we need. We need more people like this sitting at the table saying, "Hey, let's look at the the nuts and bolts of this thing and figure out how to fix it." You know that that that's the big thing. And that's a, he's probably in that regard. I think probably the most qualified guy among them. Yeah, in that regard, uh, another guy that I I don't uh, I'm, I'm detesting or beginning to Chris Christie. I had a modicum of respect for him until uh, you know this last performance. Because of the fact, uh, if you look at his his record as governor of uh, New Jersey, it's not exactly sterling. And the only thing he could do is talk about boy in the bubble, and uh, you know, you know, the, the, his performance. I'm sure you guys saw it, and uh, I wasn't impressed nope. at, at, whatsoever. And so uh, he's fading into the woodwork at about seven percent right now, according to uh, uh, exit polls. But uh, you know, he needs to go away too, as yeah, far as well, I'm concerned. Again, Chris Christie is somebody that's doing something that he probably shouldn't be doing. Again, and, and I'll say this, and we got to go to a break, and then we'll give the, the, the mic to Joe when we get back here. Chris Christie would be a great attorney general because he's good at that stuff. He's not a good governor. He'd be a great attorney general. He is a great prosecutor. He's a great litigator. You know, it, that, that's, that's what he does. These guys have got to be mm-hmm. taken out of what they're doing and put where they can actually be the most useful. That, that's my opinion. i I, I got to go to a break here. Uh, our short commercial break here. We'll be right back with Ron Edwards and Joe Hako. Stay with us. We'll be, we're not going anywhere. You can catch all our archives at theconservativesyndicate.net. The Conservative Syndicate, real conservative talk from real conservatives. Prices are for base buildings only. May not be available in some areas. Attention business owners, do you want a stimulus package that really works? Before you spend thousands of dollars more than you should on your next building project, listen to this. General Steel has a stimulus package designed to help you save as much as half the cost of conventional construction on your next building. As much as half. That's right. General Steel can save you thousands of dollars with a pre-engineered steel building designed for your business or church. How about a 50 by 100 foot building for under $30,000? So don't pay thousands more than you should without calling General Steel first and save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. With the projected demand for steel in Japan and China, prices may be skyrocketing. 877-927-3360-877-927-3360-877-927-3360. Hey folks, if you're like me, you don't place a whole lot of trust in today's media for the real truth and facts regarding the volatile world of finance and politics. When I want the real scoop on money, I go to the most trusted source I know, my good friend and colleague, Bob Cardoso. Bob is a noted expert with a Ph.D. in international finance who airs his nationally known, globally syndicated show, Robert Cardoso Live, daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. With Bob, you'll get the right information at the right time from someone who knows his business and can help you make the right decision concerning yours. Again, Bob airs daily, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit his website at robertcardosalive.com for information regarding stations and topics. That's robertcardosalive.com. Check Bob out. You'll be glad you did. Okay, we're back. And you're listening to the Conservative Syndicate. I'm your host, John Matthews, along with Joe Hakos, my co-host. And we have Ron Edwards uh, back from uh, the Edwards Notebook doing his weekly, bi-weekly contribution here at the conservative syndicate and i want i want to just make a note here um i'm not seeing anything out there in terms of actual results right now i'm seeing a lot of stuff being posted about the traffic um there's one city here one precinct merrimack precinct population twenty five thousand people and one place to vote and one place to vote they said the lines out there are up to two miles long and they, what they're doing now, what the reporters are doing, is they're walking down the traffic line asking people about well, how they feel about being stuck in traffic. Now, you're up there in, what, two, three feet of snow? No, it's not <laughs> that bad. Come yeah. On. Well, isn't that a reporter for you? 
You know, you, you're sitting there yeah. bleeding on the ground. You know, you've been shot in the head three times, and and they look down at you to go, "How are you feeling right now?" You got a headache? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to the media. Okay. No, there's results out, John. Right now, just look at it right now. They got Trump at, uh, is winning right now. Uh, uh, Christie, the guy that uh, Ron was just talking about, sit at nine percent, so he's definitely not yep. winning. And uh, uh, Sanders, surprisingly, he's only at 10 points in front of Clinton uh, at 54-44. So, uh, but, you know, it's still way early. Oh, and yeah. you got those guys in Merrimack. And seriously, they're going to do everything they can to get those, vote, those yeah. folks in there uh, to vote. Yeah. Mr. So. Mr. 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 Let's uh, have Kool-Aid together. Uh, John Kasich, he's, a, he's in second place, way behind the Trump at 15%. Yes, well, you, which is not surprising. Yeah, yeah well, you yeah, know, then, demographically, I think uh, New Hampshire is is made more for the liberal vote anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, it's definitely he yeah. spent way more time there in New Hampshire than he ever did in Iowa because uh -huh. those people in Iowa understand what Kasich is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Jeb yeah. Bush. They are not like and, and like John just said, the people in New Hampshire are more like the Kasich. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. they're more into the Jeb Bush light, you know. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, but the now, one difference between what, what we're um, seeing now, I, I and I believe I've also heard, and, and just so we don't be we don't end up getting blamed for the same mistake that Ted Cruz made. Ben Carson has already left New Hampshire. He's already heading to South Carolina, so he's not. I guess in his mind, he's thinking it's time to move on. Maybe get something going on down South Carolina. What do you see coming up in South Carolina, Ron? Because I, I don't think South Carolina is going to be friendly to Trump at all. That's a great possibility because of the, the problem is that who are they going to be uh, friendly to, though? Uh, hopefully it's Cruz. And, but, you know, some of the others may uh, show up strong there, like uh, Bush, if, especially if Bush has a good head of steam coming out of uh, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, Dr. Carson, I mean, he should just pack it in. I mean, really, he's at a whopping 2% right now. And, uh, man, it just doesn't uh, look too good for the big fella. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, the Carolinas, it's a more conservative state than, uh, at least more conservative than New Hampshire. And, um, you know, you have some pretty smart folks down there. And I think that uh, if Trump could pull it off but it'll be much much tighter and it's going to be between trump and cruz mm -hmm. uh as to who pulls that off yeah, uh, I, I don't think that uh the bush or christie or uh those others will will do very well down there either yeah i really think i think we're going to go into uh super tuesday in march mm -hmm. with uh cruz and trump and rubio pretty much even Stephen, I, I I see Cruz doing very well in South Carolina, um, and Rubio right behind him, and then I see Trump doing very well in Nevada. When Nevada comes up towards the end of the month, and uh, how that ends up splitting between the other candidates it remains to be seen. But I think going into Super Tuesday, um, what we may have here is just you know, it's going to be a pretty much a three man race. And uh, one of the things I found fascinating, uh, John Sunu who was uh, an old Bush um, compatriot kind of guy and uh, also had some strong ties with Ronald Reagan, is actually out on Twitter today floating the idea that should this be the case, should we go into Super uh, Tuesday in March with three men pretty much virtually tied for the, uh, for the nomination, that lo and behold, we're looking at a brokered convention. What do you think of that, Joe? <laughs> Well, Sununu said that? Okay, fine. But uh, I, I remember who he's picked in previous elections. I don't know. What, what do you got on that one, Ron? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. it's just going it, to... Um, what do you John think about Sununu. that, Ron? What do you think about the possibility of a brokered convention? I don't... Oh, gosh. I, I don't think very highly of that. And it would be nasty. It would fall right in the hands of the establishment of the, of the guys who are anti-Trump, who are uh, anti anyone who's um right of bush and uh who's, who's their other their their other favorite their their, their favorite son um uh, not cruz but the uh, rubio um and so they would love it and because they do not they absolutely do not want trump and see that's the other reason why 
I have not turned my back on Trump yet because I look at who's against him uh, outside of you guys, but I look at the establishment that is against uh, Mr. Trump. I look at how Megyn Kelly, and, and, and there's some things with Fox News and other back uh, story details as to why he did not show up at that event. It has nothing to do with uh, what we were told about in the media, but, you know, I look at all these people that dislike Trump in the media, that dislike him in the Republican Party, and almost all of them are very liberal or very statist in their thinking. Uh, they're all, you know, they're all in the back pocket of people like Bush and, and, and think like, and, you know, and, and uh, that type is not going to be good for America. Bush, not uh, Christie, not, uh, and Fiorina, she says great things when I hear her, but I don't trust her. I, I my gut does not uh, trust her either. So, um, it's going to be very interesting. And I, I am hoping against hope that we do not have to endure a brokered convention because that's that's just uh, that'll just be nasty. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it, uh, it'll be it'll almost guarantee the election. We'll have to really pinch our noses and and to to vote. You know, as like we did when uh, I don't know if you remember when uh, John McCain. It wasn't a brokered convention, but we could end up with someone of that ilk again if if they get their brokered convention. Well, you know, when I think of John McCain, I think of that commercial that the Democrats uh, played in the last election cycle of pushing the uh, grandma over the cliff. <laughs> and I, I think that's yeah. what we should do with John McCain. I think it's time to put him in a wheelchair and either wheel him into the old farts home or get rid of him. I Do something with this guy. He's getting, becoming a, an annoyance, much like Jeb exclamation point Bush and uh, Lindsey Graham. Ron, we are out of time here. I wanted to give you a moment here to plug okay. your, uh, your website since you've been back. Uh, it's good to have you back. And uh, uh, take a moment here and let people know how they can find you. Well, you can find me at uh, edwards.com. That's my website. And we do have some archives of uh, the Edwards Notebook, which is aired nationally uh, uh, throughout the country. And you can find out where on the website. Also, my column, uh, you can uh, read the column. It's uh, still running over at News with Views. It's a weekly column, Fairfax Free Citizen, as well as on Red State Talk Nation, Talk Radio, rather. And um, that's what we're doing. We're still focusing on the Avail with Notebook and growing that and uh, continuing to do our part to uh, turn this great republic around. And right, I am friend. happy to be back, gentlemen. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much. God bless. And we'll talk to you uh, two weeks from now when we have you back on again oh. every, every other Tuesday. We have Ron Edwards Absolutely. from the Edwards Notebook. Okay, thanks a lot, Ron. Thank you. That's All right, uh, guys, we're going to close it down for today. But what I want to just fill you in on what's going to happen here once we get off the air. If you're listening to us at High Plains Radio and SHR Media, uh, Dan Butcher, Glenn Atkinson, Ken McLinton, Warner Todd Huston, and Ann Ubillis will be taking over uh, the show here after we get off. And they'll be bringing you the latest on the results in New Hampshire, what they can get their hands on. I'm not sure... Uh, how soon we're actually going to get some real tangible numbers here. And uh, they'll, they'll also be talking about the presidential race in terms of going towards the Mar March primary, Super Tuesday in particular. After that, Gene uh, Berardelli, Russell Gallo, and the rest of the Behind the Enemy Lines crew will be taking over, and they'll be discussing the New Hampshire results. They'll probably be the ones that really give you the solid numbers. And they will have an inter they're going to be interviewing Dan Gaynor from Newsbusters and Andre Walker from Town Hall Magazine, who was their United Kingdom correspondent. So uh, make sure you just stay tuned uh, if you're on High Plains Radio and SHR Media. The rest of you will be back tomorrow right here at the Conservative Syndicate on all of our affiliates, uh, uh, Patriot News Network and uh, Rebooting Liberty, just to mention a couple more of them. We're all over the place. And we just appreciate you taking the time to join us this day. And tomorrow, of course, we'll know what the results are unless the traffic is still tied up in New Hampshire. Who knows, you know, who knows what could go on this time, this time around. So God bless you all. Thank you so much for uh, listening today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of The Conservative Syndicate, the globally syndicated, politically incorrect talk show that seeks to tear down the imaginary wall of separation between church and state. We want to make you aware you can find and access all of our show archives at our website, theconservativesyndicate.net, as well as our broadcast stations and times. 
That's the conservativesyndicate.net. We so appreciate you taking time to tune in, and we so look forward to continuing to bring you the best in uncompromised talk radio available on the net today. And remember, folks, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down in life. It only matters how many times you get up. I'm John Matthews, signing off until next time, right here on the Conservative Syndicate. God bless you, and may God continue to bless America.